I'm Lydell, part of IPFS stewards at Protocol Labs, and I lost my USB dongle. So I'm on a borrowed laptop. Um, this will be a rapid fire uh, year in review of uh, specification IPIPs. Uh, IPIP is a four letter acronym for <laughs> interplanetary uh, improvement proposal. Uh, we had to come up with something that's four letters, so that's it. Um, and the last year in Iceland, we announced an uh, IPIP process to the community and asked if there is a spec, propose a delta, propose improvement proposal using this new process. Uh, if there's no spec, write it. <laughs> so uh, if there is a, something you want to change in a spec, open pull request, it does not have to be perfect. There was a template just to get the conversation rolling. And this talk will go over uh, some highlights of uh, the IPIPs that happened uh, in between that moment when we announced uh, the possibility of engaging with the specs and today. Um, so right now we have a project board where we try to roughly track um, the life cycle of IPIPs. Uh, things that we, uh, things in, that are in progress are softly accepted the, for the continued conversation. And once the spec uh, gets reference implementation, once we uh, ag agree on the shape, uh, we then discuss how we would test that, what types of fixtures would you include. And at the end of the pipeline, when we have a spec that people are uh, fairly happy, uh, we have an ad hoc group of uh, spec uh, stewards. Um, and we try to at least check in with people from outside of PL who maintain other implementations uh, like IRO. Uh, to be in the loop to raise any concerns about long-term uh, possibility of supporting those things. Even if the implementations today don't plan to adapt a thing, uh, we are planning uh, ahead, like in five years from now, if it turns out it's something you would use, would you be happy with this spec? Um, and then once it's uh, ratified uh, and ships with at least one reference implementation, that's usually Kubo, now the box library, uh, we move that to ratified column. Um, so we had a bunch of uh, proposals, and I started with ones that we did not uh, ratify. We actually like had a very lengthy discussion, and then discussion ended. But this is still a very useful artifact for the community. So for example, the first one, we had discussion about um, exporting DNSSEC proofs for DNS link records. Uh, it was proposed by Cloudflare, but at the end of the, con during the conversation, we realized uh, actually it's not IPFS specific. This should be part of DNS over HTTPS uh, and should not be tied to IPFS records. You just, you should be able to fetch proof of any uh, record. Similarly, we had a very lengthy discussion about CADV2. And at the end of the day, uh, people realized they can do the thing that they thought they need to introduce CADV2 by way simpler means without impacting wider ecosystem. And if we did not have IPIP process, and I will like stick my neck out uh, uh, probably by saying this, we could have a problem because someone could ship CIDV2 and then we need to live with this. The, every IPFS implementation have to implement CIDV2 now because one team had the need and other people did not really care or were not in the loop. So I think the system works. And the fact that we had a very lengthy conversation, it's like dozens of uh, back and forths on this one. And at the end, it was, everyone was happy with uh, resolution. Um, so now things that shipped. Um, uh, mostly we have uh, gateway specs. Uh, so most of the things that shipped uh, through IP, IP process were gateway related. One, support for redirects files, uh, which enabled people to slowly shift uh, website hosting to, uh, to gateways. Um, uh, that was uh, submitted from uh, the outside of uh, PL. Uh, that was com community-driven uh, IPIP, one of the first ones. And then people started using it and noticed uh, there are some discrepancies with other parts of the gateway spec, namely the subdomain behaviors. So we have follow-up IPIPs that improve and build on top of that. Uh, and gateway redirects file is supported since Kubo 16. I tried to dig it, 
information about uh, when we shipped some things. Uh, additional things that landed, ability to fetch a bigger directory trees as a tar stream in the, the serialized form, Kuba 17, uh, JSON and CBOR in their, also like their DAG CBOR and DAG JSON uh, representation of IPLD data model, um, now you are able to like, request UNIXFS directory as the JSON that uh, shipped in Kubo 18. Um, in Kubo 19, we closed the gap around verifiability in IPFS ecosystem on gateways. In the past, you were able to fetch a block or a car, but you had to trust someone to resolve IPNS for you. Now you are able to fetch a sign IPNS record from gateway without running entire P2P stack, without having to run DHT uh, or uh, leaking your browser history to some uh, centralized indexer. N now you leak that to a gateway you effectively trust or not trust, but you can control that by having uh, multiple gateways to choose from. So that's Kubo 19. Um, as a project, part of the project RIA, we are working on a thing that we've been open for a while we, had a support, we have a support for uh, retrieving multiple blocks in a single car archive, but that was uh, very limited. It always gave you the entire subgraph. And if you are fetching Wikipedia, that's hundreds of gigabytes. Um, and maybe you just wanted a single directory to enumerate items there. So as a part of a project RIA, we realized uh, we need some sort of a partial car support, partial car export, we call that graph API. And uh, we, I believe that's like yesterday, <laughs> this week, we have uh, IPAP opened uh, to add uh, additional parameter, additional uh, um, scope selectors to the uh, car export, uh, being able to limit the depth, uh, logical depth, and also like support, uh, translate HTTP byte ranges, byte range requests uh, to uh, block requests uh, on IPFS, which will effectively enable people to write uh, more efficient uh, light clients. Um, and piggyback, going back to the, one of the, our like, existential threats, uh, 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 bad bits and denial lists are, all, are never a priority until there's an incident, and there is a priority for a week, and there is no longer a priority. But over time, like, people are pushing forward. So we had Cloudflare uh, starting that conversation, proposing the format. Then uh, we have pe people who run our operations within PL and outside, uh, providing feedback based on that, identifying that, that uh, the first proposal was very limited and we need more like holistic view of how the list would be created, how list would be parsed and maintained and what are the performance li limitations around that. And then how would we build uh, like governance around uh, maintaining those lists. Uh, it should not be just PL uh, maintaining a single list. There could be like, organizations being able to use the same format, uh, maybe like building lists from other lists for specific jurisdictions, maybe like implementations, automatically enabling lists, depending on which country you are running, the, your node. So we are on that path. The latest IPAP 383 proposes compact denial list format, which covers a lot of use cases. And it's already supported by uh, the bad bits, which is the fact of the current thing that we have. Um, we, you can give it a try. There's also like implementation in Go. Um, we, in the past year, we cleaned up our delegated routing story. We removed the uh, experimental reframe protocol and we replaced that with way simpler uh, HTTP uh, API for us, like give me, just give me a prov uh, some providers of this CID uh, without having to uh, run specialized clients. It should be very, very easy. Uh, IPIP 337 uh, started uh, as on that path. Uh, it's implemented on uh, by CID that contact IPNI indexer and support for that is in Kubo 18. And we have a bunch of uh, follow-up work and going, ongoing work around this. Uh, currently, we only del have delegated content routing, but there are other types of routing. We, we, there is peer routing, uh, being able to resolve IPNS records currently. Uh, those gateways that return you signed records, they should not ha be forced to use DHT as well. They should be able to like, delegate that to uh, some other box. Um, 
So we are working on both uh, adding mo other types of routing to uh, to the ba to that uh, HTTP spec, but also making it possible to not only get data but also publish over HTTP. So the fact of being able to announce uh, your provider records over HTTP or announce your IPNS record over HTTP instead of running full uh, uh, DHT client. Uh, kind of like grows the pie. It's not like we are replacing Kubo. We are just filling the niche where people would not be able to run things like Kubo. Uh, streaming, streaming is important, especially if you are doing DHT proxying through this uh, delegated API. You don't want to wait uh, multiple minutes before you get a response back. Um, you want to get records uh, as they arrive uh, from uh, DHT crawling, hopefully later this year. Uh, and finally, I mentioned there are huge gaps in our specs. One of them is uh, IPFS DHT specification. So there is a proposal to add a double hashing uh, DHT to our ecosystem, which helps with reader privacy. But to do that, we de facto need to uh, define the current state of things. So that's a very positive. Uh, one, we will have a spec of DHT, and two, we'll have a better DHT uh, as a process. And and there's a long tail of other things that we want to do, cleaning up IPNS spec, um, improving the way UnixFS and gateways interact with each other around content types. Uh, UnixFS specification is uh, probably the, the, the biggest thing to land. Uh, uh, when we have time, things like uh, data onboarding uh, over HTTP post. And finally, the, the indexer story, it's still in the flux. We need to figure out how to discover them, what's, What's the mechanism for that? Probably not centralized HTTP endpoint. Uh, probably there are better protocols uh, for doing that. Um, yeah, so probably I run uh, more than I should, but uh, this is like a small uh, set of highlights uh, just to show that the process is working. And, uh, and I'd say like keep them coming. If there is no spec, write spec. If you have no time to write spec, open an issue highlighting there's, there's this gap in the specs. And if there is a spec and you want to improve it or propose a change, uh, open IPAP it does not have to be perfect. There's a template. We are in the process of moving uh, IPAPs into this specs uh, IPFS tech website to kind of like showcase them, uh, the ones that we ratified, and also the process so it's easier for people to discover not only uh, the, the GitHub history of uh, the spec changes, but also understand the rationale behind them, the rationale behind every spec change, this like audit log, the, the, our like community and memory, why did we made some decisions, what we, why, when did we made some changes to the specs, that's uh, effectively the, the value added by the IPIP process, so keep them coming, thank you. Anyone want to write a spec? So, sorry, uh, any questions? <laughs> Uh, besides writing specs, Lytle, which is great and makes sense, is there any other way for people to be able to help? Uh, so th there are like multiple ways you can help. One, uh, look at the process. If something uh, seems uh, too complicated or outdated, let us know. Uh, if you see a way, um, uh, if you see a way we could improve it, let us know. It, it, it's a, like a, a things with principles. It's like a living process. Uh, so uh, we are uh, looking for feedback. Um, in general, when it comes to like spec improvements, it's not just technical. It's very important uh, and very valuable for people to read specs. And if things, if there are gaps, if there are mistakes, or something could be, re it's very confusing, uh, especially like for people who are not native speakers. Um, we run into this trap where we describe fairly. Not, not that complex things using too complex language, um, and that introduces artificial barriers. So even like people who don't feel like they could contribute technical things, uh, proofread reading specs and raising questions, that may, that makes specs better because you know the specs should be very very written in a very very simple language. We are building complex systems. We should not like make things more complex than they have to be. 
and the usual you you need to you cannot make the complex thing because the debugging will be way more complex and you run out of your co cognitive capacity to understand the system so the specs should be like very very easy to comprehend and and you, you don't have to file an ipip to to improve the language right oh, you, yeah, you yeah. just like yeah. yeah, so like uh, the IPIP is a specifically the process to, to create this like audit trail. Why did we make some technical decisions? If you see a gap in the specs, there's no spec. You don't need IP, uh, IPIP for that. Just open PR filling the gap. Uh, if there is a typo or if you want to rephrase a sentence, that, that's, that's like editorial change. And editorial changes do not require IPIPs. IPIPs are kind of like if there is a technical change, then you need IPIP. So we, we wrote all the specs we needed. That's good. Who's validating that the specs are being implemented? Um, so that's, uh, that's why, why we, uh, why we not need uh, conformance tests as next to specs. So are, are we writing specs in code? Yeah, so, uh, so for example, the, the one uh, I, I show, yeah. So for example, for, the, uh, for this IPIP, when the redirects file uh, support was introduced, uh, there was a reference implementation uh, in Kubo, and the IPIP itself included test fixtures section with CIDs. It's very nice because you just put CID. <laughs> um, with CIDs uh, that include uh, all the important edge cases or the important use cases, examples of important use cases for this specific thing. And then we have uh, the gateway conformance test suite now. Uh, if we had it back then, it would be part of this IPIP. The idea is that before it's merged, you have test fixtures or at least explanation how to create them. And in case of gateway uh, uh, IPIPs, uh, test fixtures are part of IPIP and the same test fixtures, exactly the same CAD, the, exactly the same cars are part of the conformance tests and they're like physical tests that demonstrate how things should work. And then implementations like Kubo or someone else uh, need to pass them. And the nice property of this process is that you, uh, different implementations uh, use the same test fixtures. So we are, not, we are testing the, against the same thing instead of writing our own tests which pass our own code and then we argue that this edge case is not a bug or it's a feature. No, at least we have we, we can agree that the, the fixtures from the IPIP are that like uh, the baseline that we should pass. And that can also like raise the, the bar for people who are reviewing IPIPs to make it very like to focus on the test fixtures. Is the co like are the test fixtures that are present in the IPIP cover all the edge cases? So it's kind of like exercise in threat modeling of sorts. Uh, uh, but it, it pays ben uh, benefit long term because people have more confidence. Oh, I don't need to think about tests. I just use existing fixtures. Yeah, no, uh, uh, one thing is to bless you, Dietrich. Um, one thing is um, tomorrow, I think at 11, there's a non-conference workshop on don't don't cite me on the time on the exact time I'll have to check it out but um, there's a non-conference workshop on tests on the test suite so that that is definitely like an important part of the infrastructure to go with this um, and eventually we would like to get test results for all implementations on the spec site so that when you're reading a, a spec you can see which implementations pass how many how many tests and you can get a sense of the uh, back and forth between testing and, and, and specs 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Yeah, that was even you even remembered it right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just curious, Lyle. So obviously, a lot of this happens on GitHub, which is great. Um, where does the like actual, where does some of the verbal conversation and decision making occur? Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, so there are like actually two questions here. One, where's the place? And two, what, who, who are like stakeholders? Who are the people participating in the process? Right. So currently, the home for IP IP process is in IPFS implementers working group. <laughs> uh, we have we have biweekly, I believe, uh, call. Uh, we have people from uh, various implementations, usually uh, Kubo Box, or uh, we have folks from Number Zero. Uh, 
on an occasion. Uh, and we have, a, 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 during that call, we have IPIP corner where at least uh, we try to not spend too much time, sync time, but uh, if there's a new IPIP uh, that I or other stewards sees or proposes, uh, we bring that to attention of the community saying, hey, this is this thing. We are planning to land that within that many weeks, uh, let's say like in Kubo. Uh, and there's the time to review it. And uh, we will plan to have like a vo soft vote uh, on ratifying that within the, like one or two cycles uh, of uh, this meeting. Uh, so that's going back to the, the, the first uh, problem I mentioned, uh, who are the stakeholders? Currently, uh, we have our thin on uh, spec stewards of sorts. I think that group it should be like way more diverse uh, than uh, just people from IPFS stewards group. Uh, this <laughs> group, um, uh, but I think uh, we we can improve on uh, both fronts. Uh, one, um, uh, growing that group and making sure it's like diverse enough. Uh, and two, uh, if we start uh, squatting too much time on that call, we may nucleate out of that. But for now, that's IPFS uh, implementers call. I believe it's in IPFS community calendar. Um, yeah, in Onoma, yeah.